Now we all know that the latest version of Windows spies on you, and I've made several videos talking about this. A great example would be Scorecard Research, a third-party market research company that your computer connects to every time you open your browser. Literally, if I open a new tab, we are connecting to Scorecard Research, so they can study my internet behavior. We have discussed several ways of preventing this from happening, but recently I came across an amazing firewall that does this by default the moment you set it up, and that is called Portmaster. And it's a very easy one-click solution to not only Windows spying, but all kinds of ad tracking, getting a private DNS, as well as a lot of other capabilities. For instance, if we look at the connections blocked, as you can see, there are a ton of Microsoft.com domains that are actually being actively restricted. And if I open a new tab again, and uh, we refresh this list, you're going to see scorecardresearch.com on the top of the block list. And the thing I really liked about Portmaster was the ease of setup, which I think is a big barrier to entry for a lot of people for doing these things. So I really want to talk about this and how easy it was to set this up. When you install this application, it's very simple install. It'll ask you to reboot the computer. But once that's done, there is a quick setup and that's just gonna ask you what kind of trackers you wanna block. So you can customize this to say, you wanna block ad trackers, you wanna block malware, you wanna block deception, which I recommend you turn on because it includes things like phishing. And you can also make it block not safe for work stuff. And the nice thing about blocking all of this using a firewall as opposed to, let's say, a browser extension or the host file, as we discussed earlier, is that this is going to be system-wide. So whether or not you're using your browser, it is going to work and the things are still going to be blocked. So for example, if I'm using a game client like Steam and that is connecting to an ad tracking service, that's also going to be blocked. If Microsoft is doing something in the background with its event service that I cannot control, that is still going to be blocked. And also, as many of you pointed out, if Windows decides to override the host file within Windows in order to connect to its tracking sites, which by the way, I haven't seen that happen, but if that does happen in the future, this should still work. And of course, a firewall application can do a lot more. So here's a live graph of all the active and blocked connections. It's kind of funny to see so many blocked connections as a baseline because normally this would indicate tremendous malicious activity, but of course it's just Windows being Windows. But we can also see the countries we are connecting to. So this is gonna be great for figuring out if there's a a Russian uh, rat on your system or something. If you randomly see yourself connecting to Russia <laughs> out of the blue, well, that could be a cause for concern. We can also see a comprehensive view of the network activity, the processes that are creating that activity in the exact IP address that they're connecting to. So again, this could be useful in isolating malware. If you've got some kind of crypto miner on your system, you could notice that show up here connecting to some kind of remote IP. But you can also tell all the applications you do have on your system that are making outbound connections. So for example, I have Discord, I have Microsoft SharePoint, gaming services. Uh, some of these are blocked because it's telemetry. You can also see Discord connects to Spotify.com because Discord now, of course, shows you what's playing in Spotify. So this is a great application if you want to explore how your computer connects to the internet, what different applications are doing. I wouldn't recommend it as a replacement for an AV, but more as a privacy and information tool. But hey, they have a free versions, so it's definitely worth checking out. So for those of you who found my previous guides on how to restrict Microsoft spying too difficult to implement or not effective enough, this is definitely worth considering. So let me know your thoughts on Portmaster in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think of it after you've tried it yourself. And just to be clear, they haven't sponsored me to make this video, although I wouldn't mind it given I do like the application. But this video is actually sponsored by CrowdSec, which is another amazing free community tool that anyone can use to protect themselves from getting hacked. Now, a lot of you do ask how I protect my own system, and a big part of it is by using Intrusion Prevention System, making sure that my RDP ports are protected, making sure if there's any kind of inbound attack, it is going to get locked in one of my security engines and alert it. This is thanks to the community edition of CrowdSec, which protects you from 
various different scenarios, various vulnerabilities. If you're hosting anything on the internet, you should definitely consider checking this out because it's an absolutely free tool that you can deploy on your Windows or Linux system to stop backdoor attempts into your computer or your server. Setting it up is pretty easy. Once you have it installed, it's gonna show up in your program files if you're doing this on Windows. And then you have a tool called CSCLI. And if you have the terminal here, you can use the CSCLI commands in order to interact with the CrowdSec console. I can inspect a given scenario, install or list them. So we can go and say list. CrowdSec runs silently in the background, so it isn't something that you have to actively engage with very much. But if you do want to look up a specific IP, know if it's malicious, you can always check it out. So for example, this one has been doing SSH brute force attacks. And if you have a bouncer engaged on your system, it is going to protect you from IPs like that trying to connect to your network. They are building this as a community tool. They want your engagement, they want your involvement. They even have their project on GitHub and it is something you can expand upon, you can build on, you can contribute to. Feel free to reach out to them. But above all, I hope you found the information in this video helpful. Please like and share it if you did. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting cybersecurity content. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.